Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today's topic is a Hegard splitting or Hegard. So a Danish name, very hard to pronounce. I apologize in advance. I will get it wrong all the time. So let me try again. I think it's a Hegard splitting. Um, anyway, um, so it's about attaching handles and we will see that it is very useful to study manifolds. So not just three manifolds, we start with three manifolds, uh, but also higher dimensional manifolds. Um, and that's kind of what we need for four manifolds. So for three manifolds, well, the, the Kirby calculus was actually really, really powerful. So the interests and in Kirby calculus. And here's another way of working with them, uh, which depending a bit what you want to do, is also very powerful, but kind of the, the merge of those will give us a way to study higher dimensional manifolds. So, well, let's just get started with, uh, let me try again, a hay card splitting. Um, probably that's horribly wrong. Anyway, so again, Danish names are very hard to pronounce. There was a Danish mathematician with a name that I can't pronounce. Um, and it's spelled like this. Anyway, uh, let's go to the idea. So in the two-dimensional case, we already had the classification of closed orientable two-manifolds. I mean, it was pretty nice. It was essentially, they were essentially just those beasts here, and they were obtained by gluing handles, those little things here, to a sphere, S2, right? So we are gluing handles to S2, and we obtain the complete classification of closed manifolds, orientable, blah, 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 two manifolds, surfaces. And one can hope that something similar works for higher dimensions. Um, obviously, by now we are we know that higher dimensions are tricky, so it won't be a completely straightforward generalization of this theorem, but maybe something along those lines work. And that's exactly what our uh, good little friend that I can't pronounce, Hickard, did about a hundred years ago. So just a higher dimension analog of attaching handles. So let's see what that actually could mean. So let's first do something sim simple. Instead of S2, we take, we just fill it up. So S2 is a soccer ball and we just fill it up with uh, water, I guess, or something so that it's filled it's, instead of hollow. And we have D3, the three ball, which is, let's call it the bowling ball. So it's really not hollow. Um, I actually don't know whether bowling balls are hollow, probably not. <laughs> anyway, um, so it's a not hollow ball. Um, and you can do still attach handles to that. It's the same process. It's actually the same picture, just that this one is D3. Uh, so it's not hollow anymore. It's a, let's let me call it a bowling ball. It's a bowling ball. Um, and what you get is a handle body. So in, in this case, we would produce here, let's just say we have one of them. We would produce a swim ring. So torus, which is hollow, right? Swim ring, hollow, you can blow air inside. So that's what you get in the two-dimensional case. In this case, you get more like really the donut. Um, the usual confusion in topology. So a torus is not a donut. A donut is not hollow. A torus is hollow. I hope you don't want your donuts to be hollow. So a torus is not a donut. Uh, a donut is actually a handle body uh, ob obtained by attaching a handle to D3. So that's really the difference now. So everything is kind of filled up in this uh, filled up picture. And that's exactly the, the, the only difference. So these are really the same beasts as before, but filled and not hollow. Say it again, the torus is not a donut. It's more like a swim ring. And the donut is this filled version here that we are using right now. Um, and then there's this idea of Hecard, uh, again, pronounced horribly wrong. But anyway, this idea of Hecard that you can always split a manifold into two handle bodies. Um, and this is a handle body and you can glue them ag uh, along um, the common boundary. So split it and glue it along the boundary. And the gluing process can be crazy. So this is where the complexity comes in. But essentially the two basic pieces are just, well, let me just say they are donuts or bagels or whatever you want to call them. But so the, the bagel is here and the other bagel is here. In my picture, in my example, this is a very boring bagel, but I will come back to that in a second. So any such splitting of a three manifold into the tendal bodies is called a Hecard splitting, again pronouncing the name very wrong. Um, anyway, so the, the prime example that I would like to sell is S3, which is, well, really the Earth um, in a three-dimensional fashion. Um, so I just want to, for you to think of this picture as one dimension higher, 
and the surface of the Earth is glued together from the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere along uh, the equator. And that's exactly what an Haycard splitting is, because this one here, the northern hemisphere is just a disk. It's D2, the southern hemisphere is just a disk, it's D2, which is a very boring handle body, <laughs> but it's now glued together along the common boundary. And we do exactly the same in three dimensions, it gets a little bit harder to imagine. So we have a D3 here, and we have a D3 here, which is the easiest case of a handle body, namely a handle body without handles, and we glue them together uh, along their common boundary. So here the boundary is an S1. Uh, I should do this in purple, I guess. So let me just do this in purple as before. So this is an S1. This was supposed to be purple. Let me try again. So this is an S1. And in the three-dimensional version, it just gets one higher and you glue them together along S2. So just the same picture, just one dimension higher. And the hemisphere picture is kind of the baby example of a Haycard splitting. It is just a baby example because my handle bodies are fairly boring. They don't have any handles, but it's still, uh, a re I think, a really cool example or uh, at least a very memorable example of what a Haycard splitting is. And the point of uh, Haycard theorem is that this works for any of those beasts that we are hopefully reasonably familiar with by now, but it's kind of a generalization of the two-dimensional case, closed oriented two manifolds to closed orientable three manifolds, and they admit a Haycard splitting. So you can always have uh, you kind of split them into two easy pieces, and the whole complexity is in the gluing or along the boundary. So here again, a little bit of a deceiving picture because the pieces are very simple and the gluing map is really simple. In general, the pieces could be complicated, uh, but not too complicated. They are, they are still uh, just donuts, but the gluing can be very complicated and we kind of need to understand the gluing. And I will explain in the next video, this is very similar to the Dane surgery that we have seen before. And of course it should be because uh, we describe the same class of manifolds here. But for now, this is just what I would like to say. There's splitting into a donut and another donut, and the whole complexity is given by how they are glued together along the along a common boundary with some potentially crazy gluing map. And I just leave the proof here. So the proof is actually pretty simple of this statement, and Haycard already proved that 110 years ago or so. Uh, so it's actually not so hard. It just takes a triangulation and thinks of a triangulation in a different way. And a triangulation, well, a triangulation of a three manifold is just putting tetrahedrons together to build the three manifold. Um, it's really not hard. So if you have a triangulation of your three manifold, then you replace the vertices by balls, the edges by cylinders, so vertices, edges, and the sides of the tetrahedron by those little plates type things. And the tetrahedron itself, you just, just them to, to kind of glue it in. And if you think about this carefully, then the union of the vertex bolts and the cylinders is a handle body, and so is the union of the tetrahedra and the, uh, the, the tetrahedra bolts and the plates, and that's exactly the Haycard splitting of the whole picture. It split things along uh, a triangulation, which in triangulation in this case just means tetrahedron all over the place. Anyway, so this was the Haycard splitting. I apologize again for pronouncing the name so wrong, but it's a cool idea to have two, two do donuts essentially, and you glue the donuts together in a funny way to create any closed orientable three manifold. It turns out to be a very powerful tool, a bit trickier to study in practice, in my opinion, than Kirby calculus, because in Kirby calculus, you have uh, very explicit relations. I haven't showed you the explicit relations for the Haycard splitting. Um, but they, I, I personally find them a bit more complicated. But anyway, there are two different ways of doing it, the, the Haycard splitting and the Kirby calculus that I've presented, and they kind of merge eventually to give us a way to study uh, three manifolds, uh, four manifolds. Right now we are only doing three manifolds. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the donuts, and I also hope to see you next time.